He was an idol in the 50s. Look at his, then after he lost all his money. Troy Donahue, originally named Merle Johnson Jr., entered the world on January 27, 1936, amidst the hustle and bustle of New York City. However, his birthplace belied the tumultuous upbringing that awaited him. Raised in a household plagued by discord, young Troy experienced the fallout of his parents' early divorce. This rupture in familial bonds set the stage for much of his formative years as he grappled with the repercussions of familial strife. The dissolution of his parents' marriage left an indelible mark on his psyche, shaping his worldview and influencing his future relationships. Amidst the chaos of his troubled household, Troy found solace and a sense of purpose in the world of acting. It was during his high school years that he discovered a passion for the dramatic arts, immersing himself in the vibrant world of theater productions. The stage became his sanctuary, offering an escape from the tumultuous realities of his personal life. Through the expressive medium of acting, Troy found a means to channel his emotions and confront the challenges of his identity and family dynamics. In the late 1950s, Troy Donahue embarked on a transformative journey that would ultimately lead him to the epicenter of the entertainment industry, Los Angeles. Fueled by an unwavering determination to pursue his passion for acting, he boldly decided to leave behind the familiar streets of New York City and venture into the unknown territory of Hollywood. This pivotal move began a thrilling odyssey filled with dreams, challenges, and moments of triumph. The turning point in Troy's career came with his breakthrough role in the 1959 film A Summer Place. Cast in the pivotal role of Ken Jorgensen, a young man caught in the throes of forbidden love, Troy delivered a performance that captivated audiences and critics alike. His magnetic screen presence and undeniable talent catapulted him into the realm of stardom, earning him accolades and acclaim. A summer place solidified Troy's status as a rising star and served as a springboard for his burgeoning career. As the 1960s dawned, Troy Donahue emerged as one of the most sought-after leading men in Hollywood, captivating audiences with his undeniable charm and mesmerizing screen presence. He quickly became synonymous with the romantic drama genre, enchanting viewers with his portrayal of dashing heroes and tormented lovers. Throughout the decade, Troy starred in a string of romantic dramas that captured the hearts of audiences worldwide. His brooding good looks and magnetic charisma made him the quintessential teen heartthrob of the era, eliciting swoons and sighs from adoring fans. With each role he undertook, Troy brought a depth and intensity that elevated the genre to new heights, leaving an indelible mark on the cinematic landscape. Among his notable films from this period were Parish, 1961, Rome Adventure, 1962, and Susan Slade, 1961. In Parish, Troy portrayed a young man navigating the complexities of love and ambition in the tobacco fields of Connecticut. The film showcased his versatility as an actor, earning him critical acclaim and further solidifying his status as a leading man. In Rome Adventure, Troy embarked on a journey of self-discovery and romance amidst the picturesque backdrop of Italy. His portrayal of a disillusioned young man in search of passion and purpose struck a chord with audiences, cementing his reputation as a heartthrob with a penchant for epic romance. Similarly, in Susan Slade, Troy delved into the tumultuous world of forbidden love and societal expectations, delivering a performance that resonated with audiences on a profound emotional level. His portrayal of a young man torn between duty and desire showcased his range as an actor, earning him praise for his nuanced depiction of complex human emotions. As Troy Donahue's star continued to rise, he established himself as a leading man in Hollywood, often cast opposite popular actresses of the time. His on-screen chemistry with leading ladies such as Sandra Dee, Connie Stevens, and Suzanne Plachette 
captivated audiences and propelled him to even greater heights of fame and adulation. In addition to his success on the silver screen, Troy enjoyed acclaim in television with roles in series such as Surfside 6 and Hawaiian Eye. These television appearances further solidified his status as a beloved icon of the 1960s, endearing him to audiences across the country and beyond. Troy Donahue's romantic life was as captivating and tumultuous as any script he performed in. His series of marriages reflected the complexities of his journey. Each union, a chapter in a narrative marked by passion, turmoil, and ultimately, resilience. In January 1964, Donahue tied the knot with fellow actress Suzanne Plachette, a union that promised Hollywood glamour and fairy tale romance. However, their marital bliss was short lived as the couple parted ways just nine months later. Their divorce marked the end of a whirlwind romance that captivated fans and tabloids alike. Before his marriage to Plachette, Donahue's engagement to Lily Cardell added a layer of controversy to his romantic history. Cardell's lawsuit alleging that Donahue had struck her painted a less than flattering picture of the actor's personal life, hinting at underlying tensions and conflicts that would surface in his subsequent relationships. In October 1966, Donahue exchanged vows with actress Valerie Allen, yet their union was plagued by allegations of cruelty, ultimately culminating in divorce in 1968. The public spectacle of their marital discord further highlighted Donahue's struggles to maintain stability in his personal life, despite his success on screen. Donahue's third attempt at matrimony came in the form of his marriage to Alma Sharp, an executive secretary in November 1969. However, their relationship faced its own set of challenges, leading to divorce in 1972. Despite hopes for a fresh start, Donahue found himself once again grappling with the complexities of love and commitment. In 1979, Donahue embarked on his fourth marriage, this time to Vicki Taylor, but the relationship was short-lived, ending in divorce in 1981. The pattern of failed marriages underscored Donahue's struggles to find lasting happiness and stability in his personal life, despite his public image as a charismatic leading man. In his later years, Donahue found companionship with Jung Kao, offering a glimpse of solace and companionship in the twilight of his life. Amidst the turbulence of his romantic entanglements, Donahue experienced fatherhood with the birth of his son, Sean, in 1969. The complexities of fatherhood added another dimension to his life, shaping his legacy beyond the glitz and glamour of Hollywood. He was an idol in the 50s, but then he became homeless. Due to his recent divorce from Allen and other lawsuits, Donahue was advised to file bankruptcy by a lawyer, and he reluctantly did so on October 1, 1968. He eventually lost his home and began sleeping on friends' couches. He claimed that he spent a lot of time judging beauty contests and opening banks during this time. I was living like a movie star, but wasn't being paid like one, he says. I lived way over my head and got into great trouble and lost everything. I went from a beautiful home, garden, swimming pool, to living in shabby apartments. Donahue was struggling to make his way in a changing Hollywood. Despite his early success, never truly reached his full potential. Off-screen, Troy was a quiet and well-mannered individual. He was also very approachable, a really nice guy. Troy was the proverbial one of a kind. The world could use more like him. In 1974, by this time, Donahue's drug addiction and alcoholism had ruined him financially. After splitting from Sharp, Donahue claimed he was homeless and lived in a bush in Central Park. To survive, he depended on friends and even fans. Donahue stated, I went home with fans for a hot meal or a shower, and a couch or bed to sleep in. I did what I had to do. Troy Donahue, the handsome and charismatic actor of the 1950s and 1960s, led a life fraught with struggles, particularly with alcoholism and its devastating effects on his health. His battle with pancreatitis 
a painful inflammation of the pancreas often linked to excessive alcohol consumption, was a recurring ordeal that plagued him throughout his life. The severity of his condition was such that he found himself hospitalized numerous times, spending days undergoing treatment and recovery, disrupting his career and personal life regularly. The summer of 1976 stands out as a poignant example, where he was bedridden for nearly a month due to his illness, highlighting the profound impact his health issues had on his day-to-day -day existence. Despite his efforts to find stability through marriage, such as with his fourth wife, Vicki Taylor, Donahue struggled to overcome his self-destructive tendencies. His marriage, instead of providing solace and support, seemed to exacerbate his problems as he spiraled deeper into alcoholism and substance abuse. His erratic behavior, marked by heavy drinking and drug use, led to frequent absences from home, leaving his wife alone for days on end. Even in his professional endeavors, Donahue's addiction overshadowed his talent, causing him to miss auditions or attend them in a disheveled and incapacitated state, tarnishing his once promising career. The recurring episodes of pancreatitis served as stark reminders of the toll his addiction was taking on his health. Despite warnings from medical professionals about the life-threatening consequences of his drinking, Donahue found himself unable to break free from the grip of alcoholism. One particularly humiliating incident, during a rap party with Julie Newmar in 1982, showcased the depths of his addiction as he made a drunken spectacle of himself, attracting the attention of photographers and further damaging his public image. Subsequent hospitalizations only served to underscore the severity of his condition, yet still, he struggled to overcome his demons. The culmination of Donahue's health struggles came with a series of heart attacks in 2001, which ultimately claimed his life at the age of 65. Despite undergoing emergency angioplasty and bypass surgery, his body succumbed to the years of abuse inflicted upon it by his addiction. His death served as a tragic endpoint to a life marked by talent, overshadowed by personal turmoil leaving behind a legacy tarnished by the devastating effects of alcoholism. Troy Donahue's story serves as a cautionary tale about the destructive power of addiction and the importance of seeking help before it's too late.